All right. Well, now, the new government, the Albanese government, seems to want to bury us in talk about defining challenges and crises, mentioning inflation and more than a trillion dollars of debt, quote, chock full of rorts and waste. So says Jim Chalmers. I'm sure he's right. Today, the Reserve Bank has raised interest rates for only the second time in more than a decade, allegedly to counter rising inflation. Obviously, interest rates must go up. That was inevitable. But I don't think raising interest rates will do a lot to solve the current inflation problem. The Albanese government must avoid creating the impression that things are worse than they are. For example, on interest rates, let's be honest, the money is still cheap. And it's just that too many people were seduced into believing that money borrowed at next to zero interest rates could go on forever. It is one thing to detail, to detail the litany of inherited woes, but as I've said previously, we don't want to be stirring up unnecessary anxiety and hysteria about the accumulation of these issues. After all, the unemployment rate is still at 3.9%, the lowest in 50 years, but employers can't find workers. Which brings me to wages. On the one hand, it is true that real wages are falling at their fastest rate since the introduction of the GST. Real wages dropped 2.7% in the last year, 2.7%. That represents an erosion in living standards and the fall in real pay was the second worst in the history of the wage price index. Tony Burke, the new Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations, has confirmed that the new government has put a fresh submission to the Fair Work Commission's annual minimum wage review, arguing, and I quote, high and rising inflation and weak wages growth are reducing real wages across the economy and creating cost of living pressures for low paid workers, unquote. Well, that no doubt is true. So if the Commission acts on the government's suggestion, it will see a minimum wage rise of $1 an hour or roughly $40 a week. Employers have a week to lodge any objections to the submission and a fair work decision is due in time for the start of the financial year, July 1. The new government says, most laudable in an ideal world, quote, we don't want anyone to go backwards, unquote. And quote, this is what it looks like when you have a government that is willing to fight for better wages, unquote. Now, look, I'm sorry. It's a nonsense to say that any government, and the New South Wales government is going through this right now, doesn't want better wages. Indeed, the New South Wales government is going to lift its public sector wages cap for the first time since it was introduced in 2011. But unions are talking about industrial action because lifting the 2.5% cap on public sector pay to 3% represents a cut in real wages.